A recent PricewaterhouseCoopers study indicated that AI or artificial intelligence has the potential to add close to 16 trillion to the global economy by 2030, yet the technology only has an adoption rate of about 4%. So how can we demystify AI? What does this technology mean for us in the long term and for the economy? So with me is Rob Thomas, the general manager of IBM Data and AI. So great to have you yeah, here. Thanks, Jane. Great to be so here. So let's start with this report uh, that was just done, IBM Global Research from roadblock to scale, the global sprint to AI. So it looks at adoption of AI, the barriers to adoption. Kind of give me some headlines and then we'll dig a little deeper into that report. At the start of 2019, as you alluded to, adoption was four to 10%, depending on which analyst you believed. What we found in this report, which actually shocked us, was adoption is now 34% oh. on its way to 40%. That leads me to conclude we'll be at 80 to 90% in the next 24 months. So what you're seeing is businesses are starting to get comfortable with the idea of AI and what it can mean for their business. Sure, so what can it mean? And I know I've this AI has impacted everything, data collection to kind of customer service. I mean, what are all the applications that businesses could use AI for? It's anything you could possibly imagine. Let me talk about the most common ones I see today. One is customer service. Every, every company has customers. They want to do a better job of serving them. Two is actually IT, which may be a bit of an oxymoron, but you can actually use AI to better run your technology operations for any company. Mm -hmm. Then you get into things like supply chain, my finance, budgeting and planning, all these different common business domains mm -hmm. where you have a person in the organization, a senior person, whether it's a CFO or a COO, who's responsible for that they are all going to be thinking about how do I use AI to better perform the function that I have to do. In the sure, business. and it seems like AI plays a role in streamlining things. You can get to answers quicker, you can respond to customer service issues quicker, it streamlines, make things more efficient. Yes, it's, it's not about robots yeah. or self-driving cars. Mm -hmm. When we talk about AI for business, it's about how do you make better predictions? Mm -hmm. How do you automate tasks that nobody really wants to do in the first place? How do you optimize your operations? Those are the real practical applications of AI in a business. So what kind of planned investments then will we see, would you say, in 2020 in AI? Let's step back for a minute. Why were we only at four to 10% adoption a year ago? We saw three main inhibitors and these kind of come out in the survey. One was data. Your AI is only as good as your data. Companies need a lot of help getting their arms around their data and understanding what's in their data. Sure. Second was skills. We still have a gap of data scientists in the market. In the U.S. alone, it's about 150,000. So companies need better skills in data science. The third thing holding it back was trust. As businesses start to use AI, they want to know they can trust the decisions that are being made. They're free from bias. They can explain what's happening in their models. The investments that we're making is really targeting all three of those areas, okay. help clients understand their data, mm -hmm. help them build trusted AI, and as we start to do those things, it starts to have a big impact. Okay, and you mentioned something, the skills gap. So, I mean, that's a big problem, right? I mean, we are not graduating enough students that are experts in this area. There's a big gap in supply and demand. Mm -hmm. And anytime there's a gap in supply and demand, there's two ways to address it. It's augmentation, humans, mm -hmm. or it's automation. And our investments are actually targeting both of those. We've built a lot of automation to Watson, so it becomes AI that builds AI, that automates a lot of the process. And on the skills side, we built a team called Data Science Elite. These are the elite data scientists of the world. We put them on site with clients, and their mission is help this client get to a quick success okay. with AI, four to six weeks, very fast. Because what we found is if you give them the confidence then they'll keep going, but sometimes you need a way to jumpstart that. Right, so it's a way to kind of hold their hand as they jump in the process and kind of help them figure it out. I'm exactly. sure a lot of companies that are not in tech will need that. They do, because okay. and what we found is when we do it, you bring business teams and technology teams together. We put in a few people, they put in people. So after the four to six weeks, they can keep going on their own if they want. We do a lot of skills transfer as part of this. Mm -hmm. And also, if they want to continue working with us, obviously we're happy to continue working with them. Our main objective is Watson is the best AI, we know that. We want to get them to adopt it because we're confident that once they start using it, they're gonna keep using it. When I just have conversations with kind of average Americans, I mean, there's fear. 
about AI? What's the machines going to learn from themselves? Or, you know, are they going to take our jobs? Or, I mean, how do you see this industry? And is there things for people to be nervous about? Anytime there's a technology change, it's natural for people to be nervous. Mm -hmm. What does this mean for me? What I tell our clients is AI is not going to replace managers, but the managers that use AI will probably replace the managers that do not. Mm -hmm. Meaning you've got to be able to take a little bit of a risk here and maybe outside of your comfort zone because it's going to be so fundamental to how businesses transform going forward. Yeah. So yes, there's a fear factor. I'm sure in the 1900s, the farmers had a fear factor as machines were coming in sure. to take some of their work. I think farming overall has gotten a lot more productive. Sure, I mean, there's AI in farming. Absolutely. So, <laughs> it's exactly. really good. Well, thank you so much, Rob, for coming. It's a very interesting field, and feel free to come back anytime and update us as things change. Thank so, you, great to be you here. Thank you so much, and thank you as well for joining us. We'll be right back.